and on behalf of our producing educational media. Uh, we have Ed Lay, uh, George Murley, and um, Grantham Clayton who have come to talk to us about slightly different angles on that. And there are so many angles that could be covered on this, so we're only covering three slightly different angles. Um, I do as I usually do and pass over the introductions to, to you guys. Ed's coming to talk to us about what he's done with general sports. George with first year uh, resources to help first year students understand uh, research in health. And Grantham to show us what he's been doing with the learning management system, which can also be considered production of educational media using that particular system. So Ed, could you kick us off with your context and why you why yeah. you approach what you did? Yeah, so, um, I helped coordinate a subject which is part of our Masters of Musculoskeletal Level and Sports program, which is, um, I guess, it's directed at postgraduate physiotherapists. Um, and the subject is basically uh, clinical, clinical reasoning and manual therapy. It's a, done on a two week block um, in February, and the timetable is rather tight. So, what we do during this subject is we get external speakers to come and speak with external specialists. And what we find is that sometimes those specialists get sick and then you can't actually, you know, these people only come for two weeks, it's a bit tight to get them back in again. So it becomes, we don't pass the train sort of, sort of test. So we're thinking, well, how can we do these workshops online so we, you know, if they can't come in, then they can actually provide material to our students. So um, what we decided to do was um, we got some money from the faculty to develop an online resource. We thought this would be a good opportunity to try and do this. So one of the specialist lecturers was kind enough to sort of say, yep, I'm quite happy to um, give the material basically that I've developed um, to the tribe um, on an online resource, which was the MRI for the one to spy. Um, so what we did is we had an external presenter, but we also had an external filmer. And I think that became a very difficult in terms of coordinating the two to actually put it together. So we had external filming people who put it the actual resource together, uh, objects which we could then put onto the LMS. Um, is that covered so far? Um, so I guess the, the problems that we also did is we found that the external person who was providing the content usually did a PowerPoint and workshop through the material, but a lot of the stuff that he was presenting was um, things that were ripped off the internet, I guess, some of the actual Ooh. images. Which is okay if you're doing a face-to-face -face thing in terms of the copyright as long as you acknowledge your resources. But once you publish that on the internet, it becomes a whole different kettle of fish. So what we had to do was actually get an animator in to come and modify the actual resources to make them so they're the trade branded, um, and he could actually use them. Actually, produce better quality resources, which was actually a really rewarding thing to do for me. Um, and yeah, MRI pictures of MRIs, little parts of dressing, um, images of the rubber spine, which sort of pivoted and. You can actually point out different parts of the actual of the spine and how that relates to the actual images or so trying to navigate the way through the actual MRIs. So it was actually a good little resource to sort of put together. Yeah. So um, it was good fun and it was... It's so in, in the interview that we did, Ed, that is a video on the website, it boiled down to your conclusions, I remember, were uh, using the resources you had, not so much worth doing with the video, but definitely worth doing for the animation. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think the animation is really useful and it's good to get a Latrobe brand. And our external presenter will actually use that material when you present some conferences, which will brand Latrobe out internationally. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's great. But how would you do that? Would you just not do the video or would you do it differently? I would I would I would do it myself, I think. Um, I would have uh, audio PowerPoints. I don't think the way that Filming was done, it was sort of panning from Rob's face to the actual PowerPoint and back again. Yeah. I don't think that was really necessary. I think if we just had purely the PowerPoint, that would be sufficient. And we could record that ourselves within a bit like what George has sort of done, which she was probably talking about soon. Yeah. So um, I don't think it was worth the hassle of going through having an external filmer. Having said that, he was great and his editing skills were fantastic and got a nice little watermark all the way through the actual presentation that we had, which I think is really good in terms of branding if we're going to put it on YouTube. Um, but um, I'm not too sure if that those little things which make it look slick is worth the effort of getting the content. Yeah, yeah, for the expense. Oh, sorry, uh, can I ask a question? Great for that, go for it. Um, being a Luddite, uh, also, in uh, 
<laughs> in our early teaching and learning seminars, we were told um, that young people now, as we know, have so much more movement and you know they look on the web and all the games are fast and snappy and whatnot. So I'm interested to, and that therefore we should think carefully about PowerPoint presentations mm. and you know making them engaging, etc. So I'm interested that you said you thought just the PowerPoint, I and mean, then of course it depends what just the PowerPoint means, yeah. but that your impression is you didn't need the bells and whistles and whatnot. I don't think because we were it's a different market that I guess I'm working with. I'm working with postgrads who are used to going and sitting oh, okay. in conferences and, yeah. and lectures and didactic weekend courses where they're just sitting there listening to people just giving information. So they're just penalising with the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we did was we made sure that the, the lecture was broken up into 10 minute little okay. slots yeah. and it was interactive, so well, pseudo interactive, I guess. So they would listen to Rob, he would mm -hmm. present a question and show an MRI and say, have a go at trying to label these things in the MRI, and we would pause, mm -hmm. and then we would have the next lecture would actually go through those little aspects. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that the yeah, students would have a go, mm -hmm. and then they would compare their answers to the experts. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is that we'd have that, and then we'd have a little discussion board at the end, so that they could actually post their questions and interact and play with the material, mm -hmm. and answer each other's questions, and what have the material. So I guess. Yeah, it's good to have moving images, and we did have ideas of, you know, Rob actually pretending to be a, you know, I guess a weatherman, sort of pointing to things and having mm. do, doing sort of blue screen work. Yeah. But we thought it just wasn't really worth no. it. So when you say, sorry, you're talking about developing animations. I'm not yeah, quite sure they're pretty simple animated. animations. It was just like um, images from the internet, so pictures of MRI or pictures of the one, the spine mainly, um, which he were used to explain what he was doing, but you can't use those actual fixed images, you have to develop your own or use some your own source. But you say that create animations in the business that's unproblematic, how did you do that? Well we had an animator. Oh okay. Yeah. But we paid an animator to actually develop the material. So they produced similar images. They produced similar images. Which I later found out the, the lumbar spine is probably the most difficult thing to actually animate because of all the different little bumps and things. So it actually took quite a lot of time mm -hmm. with me going and talking to him and sitting with the actual animator and going through things with So it would have been pretty costly? I'm not too sure. I've never got found out the actual costs of that. So yeah, like um, a piece of string. <laughs> <laughs> Can you estimate how many hours you spent? Doing oh, much more than I expected. And I actually, I actually lost count after about 20 hours. So maybe a hundred. So um, I couldn't actually. Couldn't but your it. question was how much was the animator? No, no. Yeah. I, I was just like, where did the animations come from? Mm. It's just sort of like, mm. you know, if that, I thought that was something. Well, the animator know. was actually she was down in St Kilda and she wasn't portable, so I think she drove up to St Kilda in the Shrove to sit down with her and go through things with her because so it was impo impossible to do it. Like yeah. by email and impossible to do it. So, like Google Hangouts. So there's nothing. Because I know I've been sort of looking for students who are sort of having trouble with um, you know, memorising and you know, the technology and stuff like that, and sort of websites that give quite detailed tutorials and stuff on it, which you know are open access. So I'm just wondering, you know, is there an ability to sort of link to those sorts of things without actually making it part of your content per se? And that would be a possibility. Um, however, the content that we had was quite Very advanced. Specific, yeah. yeah. And Rob's works with orthopedic surgeons as a, um, a screening physiotherapist, which is one of these new primary contact things, which is very new in the physio world. Mm. So he's got a very specific knowledge set, which not mm. very many people have. So um, you wouldn't be able to get access to that material online. It's really available. And uh, one more question, if I may, Ed. Where are you going with that resource? Because currently you host it, or the, the resource is displayed in the learning management system. And is it entirely, is all the content in that space? Or like the other ones we saw, I can't remember, is the video on YouTube and then shown in the LMS? Or so the videos are all in the library? In, on the library. On the system. library, because yeah. we wanted to have control of it and just have the tribe students having access yeah. to it. Um, but now having listened to uh, the viewpoints here, I'm sort of thinking maybe we should put it onto YouTube. Um, but I guess also out of respect for Rob, yeah. I guess 
um, keeping it closed within the tribe, I think, is, is better for him as well. Yeah, yeah. That's what he agreed to. Yeah, definitely. That's what he agreed to. Well, George Murley followed a somewhat similar path in using external producers to produce something too brief, including uh, a celebrity speaker uh, oh. to, to help with that engagement of these young kids that we want to try and keep engaged somehow. George, tell us about that. Um, okay, so as part of our project, we um, produced, I think there was somewhere between 16 and 20 professionally produced videos. And um, as part of that, we had uh, uh, ABC Catalyst comedian Simon Pampina, who um, we uh, contacted, and he agreed to do uh, three, uh, so it was four one-minute little um, uh, skits, is that the right word? Yep. And the idea with that was to um, to do something engaging, um, the students might find a little bit humorous, and to put the, the modules, the resources, into context for the students. Um, so we've, we've developed um, an LMS resource site um, around research and evidence, which we'll make available to everyone in the faculty, um, hopefully around Christmas time. And um, we use Simon as a, as a banner for each module. So you click on Simon's video, which is housed in YouTube. It's not uh, a listed video in YouTube, so it's not publicly viewable. Um, it might be in the future, but at the moment it's not. So we just, we've just used YouTube as a streaming uh, platform. And, um, and so Simon's visible at the, as a banner for each module. Then within each uh, module and topic, we've got um, uh, short videos where academics are interviewed um, that they talk about their research, for example, that relates to the, the content that's covered in that area. So, for example, we have um, uh, we have Jeff Cummings from um, uh, his background is in statistics. Jeff produced ten videos um, on uh, different statistics, and we have um, Jeff's videos scattered through uh, module three, which is on statistics, obviously, and um, Jeff, the agreement we had with Jeff was that if he was um, willing to produce these videos, which are very high quality, um, they range from six to ten minutes, and um, the agreement was that Jeff would place those videos on his own YouTube channel, which he uses to plug his textbooks that he writes on statistics. Um, so that, that worked really well for us, and we, we embed those clips now in our um, LMS site. So this is the LMS site. Um, as it is at the moment, and you can see these are the Simon, Simon Pampina um, video clips that form bands for each module. And um, and then if we click on um, module three, um, Lee, if you click on maybe topic uh, two or three, you'll see in here that that um, uh, if we scroll through, we've used the book feature in LMS. Uh, you can see, if we scroll through, we'll eventually come across um, some of Jeff's videos. Um, so we used the same um, production company um, that Ed used. This is one of this is one of um, Jeff Cummings' videos here. Um, so we used the same production company that Ed used. So um, they were responsible for recording um, audio and video and post-production editing. <coughs> and, uh, we managed to produce very um, high quality videos, but like Ed's experience, it was it was extremely time consuming. And what we were trying to balance for this project is is producing really high quality audio and video with being pragmatic and producing a, a sufficient volume of material that would meet our project needs. And that's probably the hardest thing to do because as soon as you engage a production company. Um, Everything needs to be scripted. Mm -hmm. um, things aren't done off the cuff. Um, something, for example, Simon's videos. We we ended up with four one-minute videos, and that took 12 hours of recording on campus. Um, and it took took two full days prior to that of planning and team meetings. Mm -hmm. So you, shooting it done. How much editing? Uh, editing editing by the production company, probably days of editing. Um, there was some audio that wasn't captured to high quality, so Simon then had to come back to their studio and post production some of the audio. Um, so one of the battles is, is, as I say, trying to balance quality with being pragmatic and, and covering up material. The other, the other um, multimedia that we developed were PowerPoint 
vignettes, and these were probably the, the best, most pragmatic thing. So we bought a $250 uh, studio condenser microphone, which just is USB, plug it into your laptop. It's, it's like doing a, a vodcast, Echo 360 recording in your office. And um, those microphones are the best thing ever. You've got to get one in. If you haven't already got one in your department, um, get one. Uh, the one that we bought was a pre-Sonus. Is that it there in the picture? It is. That's that's it. Yeah, that's uh, superimposed on that that pi that picture that you're looking at is in transition. So this particular video panned between Jeff's head, which is quite animated, and um, and a PowerPoint, which was all done post-production. So this pre so the, the the microphone that we purchased was a pre-Sonus microphone that I purchased on the advice of Jason Teo, who owned this production company. He did some research for me and said this one's really good value. We also bought a pop filter to cut out the the popping out of your mouth when you when you're recording. Which is just basically um, a nylon stocking stretched over a, a, a coat hanger. Yep. <laughs> bought, um, <laughs> bought a couple of microphone stands because you need to be able to set it up quite quickly when you've got coming people coming in and out recording for you. Or if you if uh, one of the things that we did is identify uh, some talent in the faculty that, that were willing to do three or four minute recordings on threshold concepts. So for example, we we approached Megan Davidson. She was quite happy to do a, I think it was probably a three or four minute um, PowerPoint vignette on reliability. So inter intra tester reliability, that sort of thing. But that didn't take 12 minutes, 12 hours. No, I was in and out of her office <laughs> very quickly. Well, look, it's quite seriously. It took 20. It took 20 minutes. I went back to my office. It took me probably 10 or 15 minutes to, to trim the ends. I uploaded it to um, YouTube as an unlisted clip, and then I embedded it in the LMS site. So really. Just a reminder on the unlisted. Clip. Yes. It, the, what, is that? what is that? So unlisted um, unlisted clips are clips that aren't visible by the public and not searchable by the public, but. Um, what you need to find that clip is the URL. Um, so you can embed unlisted clips in your LMS site and they'll appear like you saw Jeff's and Simon's videos there, but they're not searchable by the public. Of course, that doesn't prevent people from going to that site from LMS and then sharing the, the URL. That's what we were asking mm. before. Can students download that clip and then no. you've lost your... You, you can download the clip with third-party software. Um, but it's a form of pirating. Yes. Um, They're good at that. Yeah. So you can you could download it and view it later, but that's it's it's a form of pirating, pretty and they much. Can share the link. Pirating. You can share the link. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could share the link with anyone. So you tell them they're not to do that. No, not necessarily. We just didn't want it. We, we didn't want it outward facing. If um, we we didn't see that as a big threat for no. us. No. Sorry. This. We were talking about it before. If we had patient clips on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you put something on YouTube as an unlisted clip, you need to expect that it's going to be shared okay. and visible by people that it wasn't intended for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and even even unlisted, this, I think it's a fairly significant risk if you had something private that somebody inadvertently or deliberately yeah. bought on the link. Yeah. But if I can go a little bit off the topic and talk, because this is something that we've, I mean, one of the other projects that did some professional recording involving patients at Northern Health, um, produced some fantastic stuff around podiatry and assessment. And um, <coughs> I had quite lengthy discussions with the, the staff that were responsible for recording that. Matthew Oates was responsible for that project. Um, and a podiatry colleague, Kate Harper, and we had some discussion about how we might be able to upload that to YouTube, and all sorts of issues came up. And, and of course, if you think about it, anything that is anything that like Echo 360, for example, your lecture recordings can mm -hmm. be captured by students and mm -hmm. uploaded on YouTube by students. Anything that's anything that's uh, presented digitally and recorded um, that students can download can be shared to anyone. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you pre if you present a clip in your lecture on a patient, there's nothing stopping a student downloading that Echo 360 recording and uploading it to YouTube and publishing it publicly. Well, that's why a lot of staff stop the echo. Or, yeah. No, you can't stop that, can you? Yeah. University policy is that you must use it yeah. if the room is enabled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it opens up the whole, sure. the whole can of worms. It's, it automatically shares to the office. Yeah, so uh, no, the no, lecturer has to sign, so it up, sign the echo okay. block. But don't we, can't you turn it off if you're showing people? You can pause it. You can pause it and then you put it back on when you've shown your film. Yeah. Mm. 
Uh, so that's a bit of a taste of the, mm. the multimedia part. I mean, multimedia. We did PowerPoint vignettes that were uh, that I did myself, mm. um, recording with with other staff members. We had professionally produced videos and interviews, um, and we also developed um, online quizzes in LMS as part of the resource. So in terms of multimedia. Um, that, that's the multimedia bit. I think. And you've trialled that this year, haven't you? We did. We, we piloted the, the resource in semester one. So we had about 1,500 students um, have enabled access. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a prescribed uh, resource for their mm -hmm. subject, so people, uh, students access on an as-needs basis. But we, we received lots of feedback. So we, we set up a, a feedback mechanism in, in the resource where students, before they could access the quiz, had to go through the the feedback portal. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got um, we developed 12 topics, and we've got feedback for each topic from between 65 and 250 individual students mm -hmm. um, across 12 topics. So mm -hmm. we've got lots of quantitative and qualitative feedback that we're scouring through at the moment. Mm -hmm. And we've also had it peer reviewed. We had four external peer reviewers, um, three from around Australia, one international peer reviewer, um, that gave us feedback through SurveyMonkey. Um, so we've got lots of feedback that we're working through at the moment. Yeah. George, you said you'd used Google Books. No, not me. Not Google LMS Books, books. LMS Books. Yeah, that's yes. Yeah. yeah, I hadn't heard of that before. Yeah, so there's a, there was a, um, a book feature, Grantham can probably talk better to this than I can, but there was a, there was a book feature that was enabled, I think, in Moodle 2.3. Yeah. And, um, and this, is, this is what it looks like. So you can scroll through uh, topics and, um, and you can... Chap yeah, you can chapterize it. Uh, we've got each each topic of twelve topics is is an individual book. That makes sense. Um, we can you can embed um, YouTube clips in the book. And one of the really neat features about the book is you can uh, and the students can do this from the LMS page. They can uh, convert the book into a PDF document, and that retains mm. the YouTube uh, clips which are embedded. So then they can save the PDF to file, okay. and then they've got their own little piece, if you yeah. like. Yeah. And is that picture available to all of us? It is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Currently, it's been in for the last uh, year in your LMS. So Some of the things. Is, this is add resource book. Just yeah. And, and then you start getting. Yeah. Say so that again. Add resource, uh, which you would normally do if you added a file yeah. or a yeah. select yeah. book. And that more or less takes you through. Or you can use PDFs. Just printing it off <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a PDF, is that an intuitive thing to do or is it quite? Um, to convert it to a PDF, I think. Um, for the students, like, from, is it just like a convert to PDF, click the button? Yeah, the, the, the PDF the functionality, process. I think, might be limited to either people that are using a Mac or have Adobe PDF makeup installed on a Windows based machine. Yeah. There's, the, the PDF conversion is not. Um, it's not uh, inherent in LMS. Okay, so um, if you're using a Mac, you'd go print, and then you could convert to PDF. Or if you're using a Windows machine, you could print PDF from that as well. Uh, it's fair to say that a lot of students are just simply downloading the book; they're not printing it out, mm -hmm. so but they've just we, got it. But we were originally told when we were using LMS that we should put everything up in PDF. Whatever. But since then we've been told to put mm. it up in Word yeah. because of you know, you know, student access. Mm. Maybe they were told, because that is probably the like in PDF terms, maybe it wasn't me told that, I'm sure. No, no. It, it's the, just the easiest low bar way to get stuff up there. No, I think it was on the assumption that then students couldn't change a document that you created. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, now you can. Yeah. Right, yeah, so Grantham's join us in the last minute to talk about a completely different um, perspective on producing education media, and that's using the LMS and uh, a range of approaches to presenting it in the LMS. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll start with, um, while we're on the topic of wiki, um, we'll start with uh, break two so that you can see that once you've developed your entire program in the Wikiversity space, we can then simply embed it into the LMS space. So that way your cohort of students can still submit submissions through Turnitin, through the assignment tool, 
um, but we can uh, rely on all of the content that you develop in the Wikiversity. So here is the Wikiversity page. That's the mobile theme that it's pulling from Wikiversity and it's embedded into the LMS. So if you just click through, Lee, they can sort of get a general idea. So here we have the subject outline. Uh, we can list the assessment details. And then we break it down into the modules or the weeks or the themes, however you choose to structure your content. Um, <clears throat> so it's quite a neat way of, um, and it's actually quite fast. I mean, I, I've been watching Lee put these together within 15 minutes per subject. Obviously, that's because the, the time he spent in developing the content in Wikiversity to putting the LMS subject together is literally a snap. So um, the beautiful thing is, is that uh, it is so fast and you can also um, have it in the open environment as well as in the closed environment. Okay, so let's move to, uh, let's start with example one to begin with. So example one is a subject that I put together as a core first year subject in humanities. Um, I've been at the Trove for three years, so although I'm new to health science, I'm, uh, I've, I have been around. So here I'm employing the grid template. Uh, click on critical thinking, please, Lee. Below, uh, does matter. Is that the right price point? No, the one below. The oh, sorry, yeah. yep. uh, you might need to enable your uh, flash it's blocking, yeah. yeah, sorry, yeah. It hasn't popped up. Uh, so, uh, which is a shame because uh, basically I, I wanted to demonstrate how it's loading up all of these YouTubes within the individual section and how I'm presenting it. Um, which goes back to the question earlier about what do the students need computing wise. We're getting complaints from the rural campus, especially when they're out in clinics, that they can't access enough broadband or whatever to do yeah. what they need to do. There we go, here it comes. Is this just a program that needs to be downloaded? Uh, Java is a free, free program that, uh, that you simply, um, all of your machines at, at university should be updated regularly by ICT. Yeah. Um, I feel like slapping my hand every time I say their name. But um, basically, um, all machines at home, uh, it's a free program. You just download it, it runs, and it starts to open up all of your um, videos that are presented in a week or sectional theme. So you can see here what I've done. I've listed um, the brief introduction about the, the, the week. You can also put your ILOs there. Uh, and then I've used the um, I've used a table for, uh, to put these videos into a table label, so that I can get them all neatly in a line. I've uh, given them attribution, um, and then I have the PDF document, which is key to 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 what I do, and that is basically a document that that outlines those the introduction, the ILOs, the readings. And then the online resources, I give them the actual URL and hyperlink it. And then here we've, uh, this lecture has chosen to embed, uh, sorry, to save the readings as part of that document for that week. Um, so. Ooh, the library so, the library have to attend. Oh, it's just going to say. The library here in the back row. Yes. <laughs> I didn't see you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Reading the video. Yes. So yeah. when the students open it up, the readings there, which is very nice. But we're told we're not allowed to do that to get to the. Yep. So anyway, so that's that's now that's done. Whoops. And then in the activities, <laughs> in the activities, and I wasn't here. Close my Yeah. Please. In the activities, uh, there are quizzes and forums to reflect. Um, uh, no, no. Um, so yeah, those oh, there we have a quiz and forum, and so mm -hmm. in there in the quizzes we can also embed videos as part of the question, so oh, that yeah. you can use your YouTube or can be a three-minute video that yeah. you produce yeah. and use that as the question. Mm -hmm. Where this becomes um, really useful is that once you start having students doing video submission of 
um, a scenario and you can say to them as part of the assessment, please finish your video and pose a question, then that obviously with release, you can use that video and put it into the LMS as a quiz question. Yes. So you have student generated questions but are, they are audiovisual and you can use that as a bank of questions. And that's great because other students then view that as the marker as to what is, well, what's the goal to move towards and then that becomes part of the quiz. And so this builds up and builds and builds and builds into a fantastic quiz that can be used later on and reused and recut into all different um, methods. Okay, all right, so, um, and then of course there's further readings or further web links. Can we go to example three, please, Lee? Just while he's doing that, so you can embed YouTube clips in the quiz. Yes, because uh, in version 2.1, no, version two, the quiz didn't come with the text editor. Okay. But 2.3, it comes with the text so editor. You can on HTML. So now you can, yeah, you can go HTML and you can pull in, um, or and you can hyperlink too. But so we could have clips of our own that we've got of clients or whatever. I uh, to, I guess, to start off with, you need to produce all of these um, bits okay. of material, and 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 then the uh, yeah, and you can use the table. The the other thing is that. Um, you can also record your own uh, uh, quiz boundary feedback so that if you have automated feedback in your quizzes, so you can say 80%, there's a video of Georgia comes up and says, obviously you've received 80%. You need to think about da -da 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 -da. Here's another video that might brush up your skills on, on questions that are maybe a level eight question. And then that has a hyperlink that says level eight that links to another quiz that, that boosts them up so they can reset the quiz to get them to 80, 90 percent. So, and then it's it's all automated. You don't need to do anything after that. It's obviously all the work that goes into it. But then in the grade book, you just set the grade book to, to go take the highest mark. So that yeah. I can get 40 percent and then uh, George might get 90 and then he doesn't have to sit another quiz. But I can get 40% and it'll send me through all these different quizzes till I get to the, uh, the uh, desired result and then it just takes the highest. So you can structure your, your uh, activity like that. When I started here in health sciences I realised that there was nothing around uh, in terms of health documentation and there was and if there was help documentation, it had too much words on it. So I made an LMS called Example 03. And this is a tip of the iceberg, and it is a tip of the iceberg, but it might take you a week to get through it and maybe a month to just unscramble it all. But basically, it's a combination of, uh, let's go Blender Flexible. So this, uh, there's three videos here. The first one outlines what's the current problem with education. The second one is a nice example of dentistry, a uh, flexible learning program that's offered in the UK. Uh, and then there's a lovely example, the best I've found, of what is blended learning. So if you watch those three as a start, um, you can um, uh, get a nice idea as to what's actually going on and maybe a, a, a small view of where you might be heading. And where do we find that? Uh, I can give you access to this site. I have all of your names there. I will give you access to the site and you can work your way through it. Thank you. We're also working on having it on the university yes. so that you can just do research. Yes. Listen. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. Just stick it on our like this. Because I'm going to have to get some password or something for that. Well, <laughs> no, no. I don't even need an account. No. no. Who no. no. That's, the that's, that's the idea. That's the idea. What Lee does in Wikiversity is completely open. And he's making a, a direct duplication of what I'm doing in LMS. Plus a few extra in LMS, the administration is I have to assign you individually, which is you know yet another administration task that I have to do, which is silly. Because ideally, the uh, tribe should have LMS community pages, which means they're open to the public. But ICT, I slap my hand again, have not permitted us. Well, why don't you go and work for ICT? I did Change last it. year, then now I'm here. Oh, last year <laughs> we were with them. Right. They were with us, they weren't here. Yeah. Yeah. Seen the light. Yes, yes. I got off the donkey and got on the horse. <laughs>
<laughs> Mashup education. Okay, so here is a nice example of what mashup education is employed by almost most universities across the globe, especially web integrated. What's yep. it called? Yeah, mashup is the, is mashup. the colloquial term, but it's mashup. web integrated. Yep, and it's basically oh, really? mashup. Yes, mashup. <laughs> Facebook, RSS, uh, Skype, Flickr, oh, yes. everything put all together, as well as all of the other uh, standard components, which are your presentations, your readings, uh, and emails, favorites, etc. Then below that, Lee, uh, we're working through and listing the pros and cons. So we have, uh, so I'm just trying to keep it to a minimum. Variety of modes, remixing content, cons open to public, options can be bewildering, and there is no support because it's not supported by our university. Yeah, well, that's overstating it. There is lots of support, just not in our university. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Online, there is thousands of you know, things to go through. Uh, YouTube we've spoken about, Google communities Lee spoken about. Um, this is just what is YouTube for the people who do not know what YouTube is. Working in, working in groups online is a great one. The first thing a student will do when you offer them a group assessment task, they'll just start up a Facebook site yeah. immediately. And and uh, I notice in, in some subjects they're saying that there are students that don't want to use Facebook. So automatically they'll go into a group where they prefer to meet face to face, whereas other students will use Facebook and meet in that environment. Uh, here are four fantastic examples of how students work in, in groups. Um, and uh, the one with, with the fellow with the green computer is fantastic to watch. It's, it's uh, goes for 45 minutes, but it's he's giving the student's point of view of what worked and what did and what didn't work. And uh, then, of course, there's a presentation of submitting your work as a group of students to YouTube, and you can see what that presentation looks like. Then we have here, consider the following tools, Twitter, Skype, Google Hangouts, and that's just a few. Once again, pros and cons. Uh, so just sort of skimming through, we, we have, um, it's still work in progress. It's probably 80, 90% done. We have uh, on-rotation learning. Uh, forums, blogging, podcasts, gamification, which sounds great but requires a huge amount of resource to actually get up and running. So where you make a component a into a game. Uh, audio, video, feedback. We currently already have uh, audio feedback available in the Turnitin grade mark tool. That's been in existence for probably a year and a half. Uh, however, very few academics actually use it here at La Trobe. Um, students love it because they love to hear their lecturer's voice and the cadence and they feel that they get more feedback uh, through the audio um, uh, as opposed to the uh, tabs or writing on their essay. The beautiful thing about it is it's all done and you do your correction in the virtual space. So no need to, no need for them to, you know, make the submission, you know, at the box down here. They don't need to leave work early to come and do it. It all gets done in Turnitin, it gets marked in Turnitin, and it gets it gets uh, fed back to them in Turnitin So as you well. can give individual feedback to a student? Yeah, verbally. But yeah, yeah, oh, oh. verbally, yeah. yeah. It, has, it has a built-in recorder. All that you need is your mic on your laptop or, um, or on your headphone set. And that's in the Turnitin grade mark tool. And then, of course, you can take one, <laughs> one step further. How do you keep your consternation out of your boys? It's got a cheek thing. Something horse. And then we have case, case study based learning, which is where you would take a combination of um, small snippet videos, remix them, and put together a scenario, inquiry based. Learning and present it as a as a um, as a clip for, for the student. So here's some nice ones. Yeah, that's the light and easy version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, uh, so this is great, but this requires um. More advanced skill in editing and, of course, copyright material, uh, clearance, etc. 
I've just put these in uh, because these are the examples that are currently available on YouTube that are clear. Um, close uh, that one. Uh, keep going down a bit. Um, and then a beautiful one was um, I think Amy Larson asked a question in Lee's Google uh, Professional uh, Google Plus uh, Teachers of Professional Health of how to actually find uh, copyright free menu resources. So we've made that into a section. Lee, Lee responded to her question. You clicked on Where is that? finding media resources. Yeah. Ah. So uh, Lee's responded to Amy's question and provided her with a 17 minute video of how to find and how to search for resources that are copyright free and commercially available. And so that's the, that's the benefit of being part of the, um, the Google Plus community so that um, he can uh, come through and then we can provide these answers in a in an audio visual sense. Any questions? No one's asked any questions. No. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get the Can I just ask the yes. the start, the very, very start, we talked about the wiki the wiki page and that was sort of embedded within the actual LMS page. Yes. Is that what that was? So, yes, yep. So the wiki part was done available to the to the public. Yes, and we can pull okay. all of that straight so, into. So all the lecture content, the, the outline of the actual course was there. Everything, the, yes. The subject was there. Yes. Much so, like embedding a YouTube video. Get your video yeah. on YouTube and use a bit of code to show it. Yeah. Same so you could, so if you had a potential student was asking about a subject, you could just say, well, go and have a look at this rather than the that's stuff right, that's, that's online right. at the moment, which is not. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. yeah, so here's. Sorry. Oh, yes. Um, this is the same thing. Oh, well, it's just a little, little pointer to, similar to what Grantham is doing on Wikiversity, are all the, um, the projects in that faculty going on in that space? Are you asking or saying? I'm saying they that are. Yeah. if you couldn't get enough of what Grantham has been putting together, then you could go to Wikiversity and see these conferences are recorded and mm. what other things are going on, and it's all being yeah. collected here. I think it's clear to state the difference between Lee and I is that I'm into the bits that are open line, uh, yeah. uh, open source, and I like to collect the bits for my donkey and make it look a little bit more like a faster machine. Lee's in interested in that and the platform, and so together we we we, we cross all, almost all of it, and we can present it in many different ways, backwards and forwards, left left and right, um, and it's about Selecting what, uh, which one best suits uh, where you think you want your subject to go. I think we just check the time, Brett. Yeah. yeah, that's enough. I'll see. You. Sorry. 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 So I'll give you access all to example three. Thank you. And um, mm. and hopefully I'll see you on the other side. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't know what happened. Drinks and stuff. They're uh, coming. We yeah. could. We, no is it a wrap? Oh, you're gonna. Normally a wrap will stop yeah. the web stream, and now we just chirpy, chirp, talk about whatever we're gonna do.